Welcome to another Sermonette. I appreciate your viewing and some of the comments that I receive from you. So God bless you. I want to talk about the sovereign Lord. I've always been fascinated by this attribute or future feature of God's almightiness. He is sovereign. He's always in charge. Now, many a times when I find that I can't handle a situation or I don't understand what's happening, I actually use the sovereign Lord as a cop out by quoting to myself, oh, well, you know, God's thoughts are not my thoughts and his ways are not my ways. Stupid. You can find out about the sovereign Lord in her word. And I studied Jeremiah just recently and I came across this passage of scripture in Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah saying, ah, oh, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and by the earth and your great power and outstretched arm, nothing is too hard for you. I, I want to point out what he's saying there. He's not asking a question, is there anything that's too hard for you? He makes an emphatic statement saying, nothing is too hard for you. Now, in the context and the background of this, and in a nutshell, he, Jeremiah was in that incredible situation where he was actually the prophet of doom and gloom. And he's condemning the leaders and the people of Judah for their rebelliousness and their idolatrousness and their sinful ways. In chapters 24 through to 29, and in chapter 29, we have that famous verse of scripture that I've often shared with you, that his plans are not are for a future, and I hope he's talking about this terrible nation, the Babylonians that are going to come, going to destroy Jerusalem, and going to take people captive for 70 years. Now, remember what I said, Jeremiah says, nothing is too hard for you. In this climate of absolute terror and doom and gloom and captivity looming up on the horizon, the, the, the Babylonians are on their way, that crazy King Nebuchadnezzar is going to do incredible bad things. God does something incredible. He tells Jeremiah, go buy a property. <laughs> now I think to myself, when the market is in the modern day world, in the markets crashed and the prices have gone, may we say for a ball of chalk, this is not the time now to buy. This is a time to, to, to settle down. The recession is coming and to, uh, and to make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row. The Babylonians are coming. Jeremiah himself his life is threatened and also threatened with imprisonment and confinement, God says, buy a field. In Jeremiah 32 verse 19, it talks about God's purposes that are great. And then it also says, and then his eyes are on all mankind. Verse 19, please go and check it out in the NIV translation. So what are we trying to say to you? God's eyes are on you and me. And even in this incredible situation, God says to Jeremiah, go buy a field. Let's have a look at that scripture. That scripture is in Jeremiah 32 verse 25. And though, I've highlighted the word though, and though the city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians, this is a fait accompli. It's going to happen. Chaos is going to ro ro reign. Everything is going to just change. You sovereign Lord say to me, you say to me, God, you say to me, he says, buy the field with silver and have the transaction witnessed. <laughs> buy this property. In spite of what's going on, God's eyes, verse 19, are on all mankind. And I repeat, Nothing is too hard for God. So when you are perplexed with something that God has told you to do, remember, He is sovereign. 
Now, I haven't had time or I've been trying to find out what happened to the field that Jeremiah bought. Uh, and that's besides the point or another subject for investigation at the later stage. I want to bring you another example in Genesis chapter 26. We read there that there's great famine in the land, not just famine, but great famine. And the people are fleeing to Egypt. They're going there because they know that Egypt has enough grain to be able to feed them. And God tells Isaac, stay put, stay exactly where you are. Don't go to Egypt. Now, you know, Isaac must have thought, ah, everybody is going. There's food there. We can harvest there. We can plant there. We can survive there. And you, Father God, tell me to stay? Well, let me remind you that Isaac knows that he was a miracle baby from Abraham and Sarah. So he trusts God and he stays there. And I would imagine if he'd have known further on in life that nothing is too hard for God, he would have quoted that. So Isaac stays there. Let me tell you what happened. Look at Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Man, because the Lord blessed him. I'm talking about the sovereign Lord, the incomparable one, the one who says nothing is too hard for me to do. Even when the whole land, the whole country is stricken by drought and famine, I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless your crops and you will reap a harvest a hundredfold. What do we have to do? We have to do like a Jeremiah and say, Ah, oh, you are the sovereign Lord. You are the sovereign God. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for me, for God to do for me. I wonder if we could pray together. And as we pray, maybe you also facing famine and a drought, also fa facing an impossible situation like Jeremiah. I have to buy a field, but everything is going to collapse. Maybe you are facing with issues that are incomprehensible to you. When we pray, you say, Sovereign Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Father, I thank you that you've showed me this throughout my own life, and you are now revealing it to all the listeners and to the viewers. Nothing is too hard for you, Sovereign Lord, to intervene in our lives and against all predictions and logistical, rational thinking, you bless where everything should be collapsing. You bless. So I pray your blessing upon each and every one of the viewers in Jesus' name. Amen. Trusted you being blessed and encouraged. Look forward to talking to you on Wednesday.